In this video, I'm going to solve this question. Before I start solving this question, make sure that you have a basic understanding of the concept of p-value. If you need some help with the concept of p-value, then you can have a look at our course on hypothesis testing in which we have covered all the concepts in a detailed manner. You may check the description of this video to get the access link to the course. All that said, let's get started with this question. An aspirin manufacturer fills bottles by weight rather than by count. Since each bottle should contain 100 tablets, the average weight per tablet should be 5 grains. Each of 100 tablets taken from a very large lot is weight, resulting in a sample average weight per tablet of 4.87 grains and a sample standard deviation of 0.35 grain. Does this information provide strong evidence for concluding that the company is not filling its bottles as advertised? Test the appropriate hypothesis using alpha equal to 1% by first computing the p-value and then comparing it to the specified significance level. First of all, let's say that mu is the true average weight of the tablet. So mu is a population parameter and it is the true average weight of the tablet. Now our first step is to write the null and alternate hypothesis. Note that we are given in the question that the average weight per tablet should be 5 grains. So that means mu should be equal to 5. So this is one claim that is made in the question. The counterclaim of this claim is mu not equal to 5. And as this claim has the equal to sign, so this is our null hypothesis and consequently this is our alternate hypothesis. Now note that the alternate hypothesis has a not equal to sign. So this means that this is a case of two-tailed test. So this is a case of two-tailed test. Now let us write all the information that is given in the question. We are given that n is equal to 100. So n is equal to 100. The sample average weight per tablet is 4.87 grains. I'm denoting the sample average weight by x bar. You can also call it x bar calculated. So this is equal to 4.87. And the sample standard deviation is 0.35. So s is equal to 0.35. And we are also given that the value of alpha is 0.01. So alpha is equal to 0.01. So this is the information that is given in the equation. Now let us move to step 3 and let us talk about the distribution of the sample mean and the rejection region. Note that we are not given any information about the distribution of the population. But we know that our sample size is large enough to use the central limit theorem. So using central limit theorem, we can say that the distribution of the sample mean will be approximately normal. So the distribution of sample mean will be approximately normal. And this follows from the central limit theorem. And this is how the distribution may look like. We know that the hypothesized value of the population mean is 5. So we can write 5 here. So this value is 5. The x bar calculated or the x bar is 4.87. So it will be somewhere to the left of 5. Let's say it is here. Now we know that this is a case of a two-tailed test and the value of alpha that's given to us is 0.01. So that means in this case, the rejection region will be on both the sides. So you will have one rejection region here and one rejection region here. So I'm just dividing the 0.01 into two equal parts. Now let us talk about how to calculate p-value given all this information. Note that we are dealing with a two-tailed test and when we are dealing with a two-tailed test, we know that the p-value area is the area towards the tail that is closest to the observed sample statistic. So in this case, your observed sample statistic is this. This is your observed sample mean and this observed sample mean is closest to the left tail. 
So that means the p-value area is this area. So this is the rule that we follow to calculate the p-value when we are dealing with a two-tailed test. And note that finding the probability of this shaded region will not give you the correct p-value. To find the correct p-value, you will have to multiply the probability that you get from here by 2. So now our problem boils down to finding the probability of this shaded region. And once we have this probability, we just need to multiply it by 2 to find the p-value. Now the question is, how do we find the probability of this shaded region? Whether we use the z-distribution or the t-distribution. Let's see. Now note that we are not given any information about the population standard deviation in the question. So this is the population standard deviation sigma and we are not given the value of this in the question. But what we know is that our sample size is large and by large we mean that the sample size is greater than 30. It's equal to 100 in this case. Well, when this is the case, we can safely use z test. And the formula of z in this case is equal to x bar minus mu which is the hypothesized value of the population mean divided by s divided by root n. So even if we are not given the population standard deviation we can still use z if the sample size is large and we can replace sigma that is the population standard deviation with the sample standard deviation that is s and this is the formula that we can use. So now using this formula let's find the corresponding z values. So the z value corresponding to this value of x bar will be equal to 0 as the hypothesized population mean is equal to 5. So the numerator will be 5 minus 5. And now let's find the z value corresponding to x bar equal to 4.87. So we can write that z is equal to 4.87 minus 5. The sample standard deviation is equal to 0 0.35 and n is 100. Solving this we get minus 3.714. So that means the z value corresponding to this x bar value is minus 3.714. So now our problem boils down to something like this. So let's say this is a standard normal distribution. Here the value is 0 and the value of z here is minus 3.714. All we have to do is we have to find the probability of this shaded region and then we have to multiply this probability by 2 to find the correct p value. Well finding this probability should not be difficult. There are a couple of methods that you can use to find this probability. As the z value is negative in this case either you can use the negative cumulative distribution table to find this probability or you can also invoke the symmetry rule to find this probability. For this example let's work with the negative cumulative distribution table. So as you can see, this is how the negative cumulative distribution table looks like. And from this table, we have to find the probability value corresponding to z equal to minus 3.71. But as you can see, this value of z is not given in this table. So what we have is the probability corresponding to z equal to minus 3.11, the probability corresponding to z equal to minus 3.21 corresponding to z equal to minus 3.31 and the probability corresponding to z equal to minus 3.41 and what we need is the probability corresponding to z equal to minus 3.71. Now we don't have z equal to minus 3.71 in this table but as you can see the probability when we go from z equal to minus 3.11 to z equal to minus 3.41 is declining. It's declining from 0 0.0009 to 7 to 5 to 3 so we can expect that for z equal to minus 3.71, the corresponding probability will be approximately 0.0001. Well, given this table, that's the best that you can do in this case. So we can write that for z equal to minus 3.71, the corresponding probability is 0.0001. Now note that this probability is not the correct p-value. To find the correct p-value, you have to multiply this probability by 2. So that means the p-value is equal to 0 0.0001 and this is an approximate value multiplied by 2. So this is equal to 0 0.0002. So our p-value is equal to 0 0.0002. Now our next step is to see whether we reject the null hypothesis or we do not reject the null hypothesis. And for that we have to compare this p-value with the value of alpha. Recall that we are given in the equation that alpha is equal to 0 0.01. 
So that means the p value is less than alpha in this case. So the p value is less than alpha. And when the p value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So this implies that we will reject the null hypothesis. Just to make you recall, our null hypothesis was mu equal to 5. And in this case, we are rejecting the null hypothesis. So we can conclude that the true average weight of tablet is not 5 grains. So this is the answer and this is all for this question.